Now we call this lovely stretch here the Dunakanya, the Danube Bend, because it's where the Danube bends. It curls all the way around to the tip of Santendre Siget and hooks on a pretty much 90 degree angle over at Visegrad, that famous castle town. But today we're discovering the midway point of the island, Siget Monastor. Over there we can see Leanpalu, where Alexa and I make our home. Now here we can see what in the modern day are the Vizmubek, the water wells deep into the ground. These wells are drilled and they actually supply a lot of the water for the northern part of Budapest. But long ago, this is where the watchtower stood of the Roman Empire. That's right, along the Danube, on that side of the river, and along the Centendre Siget, where we shall explore, there were Roman watchtowers. And of particular interest are the watchtowers and fortifications that were renovated and rebuilt under the reign of Emperor Valentinianus in the late 4th century as Rome was entering its final death spiral. Valentinianus did his best to restore the prestige and the dignity of the once proud empire. So here we see it, Siget Monostor. Here's Horan, which is part of Siget Monastor. It's part of the settlement. Here we can see the sigil of Siget Monastor. A nice little sigil there. There's Horan, Horan, and the Shuran. Horan and Shuran. Horan is part of Siget Monastor. Shuran is back there, and it's part of Pochmajir, which is across from Leanfalu. A lot of different names going on here, but the moral of the story is that we are now on the island in Siget Monastor. Oh, so liberating. You know, if you've read the uh, Yokai Mor novel, Az Aran Ember, the golden man, he talks about the Shanky Siget, where he can go away from the commerce and the hustle and bustle of the city and lead his idyllic pastoral life with a second wife. And that is sort of what the Santindre Siget represents. It represents liberty, not necessarily infidelity, of course, but liberty nonetheless. Look at this. We've got a bogratch. We've got remains of a bogratch. And this cement table. A nice place to relax, have a little lunch with friends, a few drinks you can imagine on the weekends. Oh la la! As the sun sets along that little crest, the boats paddling along. Go down there with a bottle of formant, cold as you'd like, a girl around your arm, and singing songs into the night. Oof, sounds pretty good. I'm sure that's what Kursan did back in the age of Arpad and the Honfoglalash. For it was Kursan, one of the tribal leaders of the early Magyars, whom Siget Manostor fell into possession of. A little recliner here. Part of the salvage heap. That's a dead bird. Slightly disturbing. Ah, yes. Ah, lovely. Yonopod. Now, some of these paths and ruts that you can see would have been used by teams of horses that pulled the barges filled with goods up the river. Imagine that, teams of seven or eight or nine horses driving massive payloads atop of flat barges down this water highway. For the horses, they could carry and propel a much heavier weight using the buoyancy of the water to lead the goods along. Siastok, Shratok. This town, Siget Monastor, Island Monastery, has always had a quite religious flavor to it. You can see the peaks of the churches of the Templum poking up beyond the sunflower field here. 
And this town, it goes all the way back in terms of named records, the first time it was named in Hungarian documents, beginning of the 13th century, around the reign of Andrew II, Masha Dik Andras, Golden Bull. You know him, you love him. Maybe you don't, I don't know. But either way, that's when it first shows up in the records, under the name of Chiburti. It was named after a bailiff called Tiburts, who was of the Rost clan, a quite prominent family or clan, if you will, in this area. In fact, Sigit Monastor went by the name Tiburts Monastor up until 1867 when it was renamed. And there was a very wealthy man who left a huge imprint on the town. Horanyi Gabor. Horanyi Gabor. Remember that name. We'll get to him in a little bit. Oh, I've never seen this one before. Vigyaz. Akutya Harap. And by in a little bit, I mean right now. For here, you can see five kilometers to Horan. Horanyi Gabor became the owner of this town, middle of the 18th century. And now Horan today is a subsection of Siget Monastor, which is a paradise for many holiday makers all along the Dunakanya. I don't know if we'll have time to get over there on today's adventure, for I would like to take a delicious little walk to the town of Siget Monastor itself. Ooh. Well, 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 if it is not Kish Sant Janos, Kish Sant Janos, the patron saint of the river people, the Foyo Emberek, Sant Janos, Kish Sant Janos. He was the confessor of Queen Joan in the Czech Republic, latter stages of the 14th century. And Saint Janos, he became a saint because of his courage and his bravery in the face of the wicked King Vince. Saint Gjörgnap. Ah, Aprilish. We've missed it. It looks quite cool. But we're not talking about Saint Gjörg, we're talking about Saint Janos. And why was King Vince so wicked? Well, Saint Janos was Queen Joan's confessor, and that means that she told him everything. It was his religious duty. But King Vince, he didn't like that so much. And when he tried to get Janos to tell him Joan's secrets, he refused. Ah, these Naprofogo look a little bit happier. Look at them. Oh, Tsuki. He refused, he refused, he refused. And so King Vince, he had him tortured, and when he continued to refuse, he had his mouth sliced open with knives, bound him up with cords and strings and ropes, and had him thrown into the river Vlatva, where he drowned. I come in peace. But the citizens of Prague that night swore that they saw stars swimming in the river Vlatva. And forever after, Janos was known as the patron saint of the river people. <sighs> well, down on the other end of Utsa, where we came from, you can see the Catholic Templum. And here is the Reformatus Templum, the Reformatus Templum, the Reform Templum. Look at its iconic eight-sided cone up there topped by a star instead of a cross, quite indicative of the reform tradition. And this Templum, this church, it has been standing on this location since 1796. Ezer, Heitzas, Kielentsven, Hat, end of the Tizen Yotzedek Sazar. Cuts a lovely shape, that Reformatus Templum, with its kakush beside the star. And here on Rakotsiutsa, we can see an indicative Sigit Monastor dwelling. So lovely, a nice mixture of the old and the new. Fruit trees 
and vine-covered walls. What do we have here? The Regi Modi Presso. Najonsep. Igazabo Najon Najonsep. Oof. What a terrific little spot we found here at the Regi Modi Presso. Egeshegedra Mininkinek. Classicus. Oh, the same. <laughs> I should know better than that. Well, we've got our copy of uh, Uy Shagalo. Let's read a little bit of the local Siget Monastory news while we relax, catch our breath, and get ready for the rest of this adventure.